What's up everyone, my name is Cody Engel, and in this video, we are going to talk about how software engineers make money. So software engineers, they can make anywhere from like $40,000 a year all the way up to $1.8 million a year based off of levels.fyi, which what they do is they actually look at the pay stubs and get that information. So this is what I would say pretty accurate. I was pretty surprised by the higher, uh, by the higher number. In this video, we're just gonna talk about what actually makes up that total compensation and explain a little bit about how those pieces work because it's much more than just a traditional salary that, that these folks are collecting. Before we jump into it, if you wouldn't mind just smashing the like button for the YouTube algorithm, it really helps with uh, getting the video recommended and getting it out there. But other than that, let's get into the video. The first way that software engineers make money is through their base salary. And so this is probably what you would associate with you know income and when people talk about how much they're making and so base salary really what that just is is your annual pay and it's usually split up into bi-weekly or semi-monthly paychecks and so if you're wondering about what the difference is between that uh, bi-weekly you're getting a paycheck every two weeks on some specific day which usually is like a friday or a monday and then semi-monthly is you're usually getting a paycheck on either the first of the month and the 15th of the month or the 15th of the month and the last day of the month. So that's just the difference. Sometimes people can get a little bit confused, so I wanted to, wanted to kind of say what that was. And in general, the way that you can expect your base salary as a software engineer to grow over time is incrementally. So you're not gonna see really huge jumps here and there. You'll see maybe like a 4% raise if you're doing really well. You'll see like 10 to 20% of a, of a raise if you're switching jobs. And that can kind of fluctuate a bit, but in general, your base salary is going to go up in just little little teeny chunks over time that, that add up. Another way that software engineers make money, and when they're talking about their total compensation, this is another number that they will talk about, is their sign-on bonus. And so a sign-on bonus, it's a one-time payment for joining a company. It's, you know, you're getting the bonus because you signed on the dotted line or because you signed on to the company. Generally, there will be a payback period with this sign-on bonus. And so what the payback period means is if you leave the company within that amount of time, you will either have to pay back all of it or portions of it. It may be a prorated amount that you have to pay back. What I've usually seen with sign-on bonuses is it will be a one-year payback period. So if you leave within a year, you will at least owe some money back to the company. From what I've seen from speaking with other folks as well, you can usually see a sign-on bonus going anywhere from like $2,500 all the way up to $50,000 or more because these bonuses, they're not really the norm. Um, I've had two sign-on bonuses uh, in my career and what they're usually there for is they're an incentive to get you to join the company. And so sometimes you do need that incentive, other times you don't need that incentive. What I've noticed is straight out of college, you may get a sign-on bonus because the company wants to just make sure that you are going to join the company and you're not gonna to go to some other competitor or some other company right out of college because at that point, you're probably interviewing with a bunch of companies. Another thing that you'll see with sign-on bonuses is they will do that if you have some sort of payment that you're expecting from your current employer. So that could be, hey, I have a bonus and I'm going to forego this bonus by joining the company. Is there anything you can do to help out? Another thing is if you may be taking a pay cut or they aren't able to meet your salary expectations 100%, they may give you a sign-on bonus to help absorb some of that pain. And then ideally you'll be able to get a raise and it'll make, make up for that. But that's usually where you'll see sign-on bonuses. They're not 100% guaranteed. I would say if you're getting a new job, like don't expect it, but they are really helpful, especially again, if you are walking away from a bonus, you're walking away from stock grants or things like that, the sign-on bonus can help out and it's a good thing to be aware of when you are negotiating. Speaking of bonuses, another one that you can expect and it's a bit more normal, I would say, is a annual bonus. And so an annual bonus, I've seen it paid out a couple of different ways. One is annually. And so you'll get it usually uh, within like the first fiscal quarter of the company, they have to get approval from their board and everything like that. And so when it's paid out annually, I've usually seen those happen in like February, March. The other one is quarterly. And I've had this happen with one company and it was actually really nice the way that worked out, but it was the entire annual bonus split up into four chunks. The bonus itself is usually percentage based 
off of your base salary. And so I've seen these go from 10% up to 30%. It can definitely get much larger, but using those numbers, if we look at the normal base salary, which I think I forgot to mention, the base salary uh, that you can usually expect is between like 40,000 and $400,000 a year as a software engineer. And so if we account for that, thinking of, you know, 10% to 30% and $40,000 to $400,000 a year, you could expect that a annual bonus might be anywhere from $4,000 on the low end all the way up to $120,000 on the high end. One thing to keep in mind though is these are just general ranges. 10 to 30% is a pretty good ballpark to assume, but if you're getting into something like uh, the trading industry and you're going to be doing, like you're going to be working as a quant or something like that, you can expect the bonus to be huge. Like it can be up to 100% of your salary or more. And so that's one thing to consider. That's a really interesting industry to get into. Um, you're usually going to be working longer hours, but you know, the bonus can be much more than 10 or 30%. It can be all the way up to 100% or more. In general, the way that they are calculating the bonus is usually a bit based on your own personal performance or your, per yeah, your personal performance as well as the company performance. Sometimes it may just be company performance. I don't think I've ever seen it only being personal performance, but that's generally what you can expect. And so these bonuses are bonus targets. And so you may have a 10% bonus target and then depending on how the company does, let's say the company does really well and it exceeds expectations, you could get more than 10%. You could get like a 12% bonus. On the other hand, if the company does worse than expected, you may not get 10%, you may get 7%, you may get 6%. And so that's one thing to factor in. I usually don't expect the bonus at all. It's just money that I'm really excited to get. The next way that software engineers earn income and a bit of a confusing one, so I'm gonna hopefully explain this well, are RSUs, which are restricted stock units. They are usually granted shortly after your start date. Generally, you get a refresher each year during your performance review. And so the refresher is just a way to incentivize you to stay at the company. So you're not getting the stock grant once and then that's it. Each year you're getting another um, additive grant. When you get your grant, the number of shares that you are getting is going to be based off of the dollar amount in your grant. All right, so let's say you have a $100,000 grant when the share price of the company was $100. That would mean that you would have 1,000 shares of that company being granted to you. So this will be important later on, so just kind of keep that in mind. The shares must vest before they can be sold. So this doesn't mean day one, you can sell all 1,000 shares. On day one, you won't have any of the shares, but they will just sort of be held for you in an account. In general, you can expect that your shares will vest over a three to four year period. And so that would mean that each year, you would get between 25% and 33% of those shares and so they would be able to be sold. And so in that example where you have 1,000 shares and let's say it's a three year vesting period, at the end of the first year, you would have 333 shares. End of the second year, 333. And then the end of the third year, it would probably be like 334 just because of how thirds work. And then the share price that you would be selling one year later is ideally more than what you were granted at that. Going back to our example, where you were granted $100,000 of RSUs, over a three year period, let's say that your company is doing well, you might expect that that grant is actually worth closer to $195,000. And so it just depends on how the stock appreciates over time. It's important to realize that you're not going to have a set dollar amount given to you when those shares are vesting. Instead, you are getting that set dollar amount of shares on day one, you just cannot sell them. And because your company is ideally appreciating and increasing in value over time, those shares are going to be worth even more than what they were when they were granted to you. And so you can imagine that this ends up making up a pretty large portion of your income, the more and more RSUs you get. And in general, you will see that a more senior level engineer they will have a base salary that may be closer to like a mid-level engineer, but they're gonna get more RSUs. And kind of similar for someone who's like a staff engineer, they may be making closer to a senior engineer salary, a little bit more, but not, not like a huge crazy amount. But their RSUs may be even larger. What I found from looking at RSUs 
based off of level, so going from like junior engineer all the way up to principal level engineer, is these tend to go up more exponentially. The higher up you are as an engineer, the more RSUs you get. The other thing to keep in mind with RSUs is going back to that refresher that I talked about. And so refreshers, they will actually kind of stack up over time. And so let's say that you had a $100,000 grant to join the company that's vesting over three years. You may get a refresher. Let's say that that is maybe like $50,000 to $100,000 a year on year one. Now on year two, when that comes due, you will have your first year's RSU grant, so the one that you got from joining the company. And then you would also have the RSUs granting from your refresher. And so you can imagine if you are at a company for say two to three years, you're getting you know two, three different grants all vesting at the same time. And so that's another thing to consider when you are getting RSUs and when you are considering the refreshers is you're actually incentivized to stay at the company for a greater period of time because of the way that RSUs will just stack up over time. That's kind of all that I have to talk about with RSUs. They can be a pretty tricky and complicated subject. If you want me to do a more in-depth video about RSUs, definitely let me know in the comments below. I would love to do a bit more like in-depth research and talk about, hey, these are the RSUs you can expect from this company or this company. And yeah, just do a full video on that. So let me know if you want me to make a video like that. I would be more than happy to. And then another way that you can make money as a software engineer is through stock options. And so stock options are similar to RSUs, but they're not quite the same. You'll generally be granted stock options after your start date. Um, again, with having refreshers each year, it really depends on the company. Some companies will do stock options as part of your offer letter. Other ones will have you wait a year and then at the one year point, they will give you some stock options, which will have a vesting period. And kind of similar to the RSUs, the vesting period is going to be anywhere between like three to four years. And along with the vesting period, there's usually an expiration date on those options, which is usually around like 10 years. And so if you're with the company for 10 years and you're not able to exercise those options, they become worthless. So that's one thing to consider. Ideally, the options won't become worthless, but if you're with a company from day one as like the first engineer or something like that, and they're only giving you options and there's a 10 year waiting period, you kind of have to wonder, well, how long will it be before I can sell those options? Not something I would be too worried about, but one thing to consider is, yeah, that expiration date. The options are kind of figured out pretty much similar to the RSUs, although they will usually tell you you are going to get like say like 500 options or 40,000 options. And they will tell you what the strike price is on those options. So you, they may say you're going to get 40,000 options at a $2 strike price, which means in terms of value, they're worth $80,000. However, because stock options are the option to purchase the stock, they're only worth something if the share price is greater than $2. If it's less than $2, then just you know, buy it. Don't use the options because you're paying more at that point. Hope that makes sense. And then this gets into sort of like how those options go from just being funny money on paper into being money that's getting into your bank account. What'll happen when you are going to exercise your options is you will usually buy the options and pay for them, and then you will sell them immediately. And so in our example, let's say that the options that you got at a $2 strike price are now worth $20. You take your 40,000 options, you buy them at $2, so you, you pay $80,000, then you turn around and you sell them for $20, which would be $800,000. And so you can kind of see where this could make up a pretty large portion of your income if you get a good strike price and the company's on a pretty good trajectory. One thing to just keep in mind, like RSUs and options, usually you're not going to get both at a company. I would say you're not going to get both at a company, but I don't know if maybe there's a company that exists that does that. If you work for one that does that, let me know. Um, but RSUs, you'll, you'll usually get those with a company that is either on track to be doing an IPO or they're already a public company. Options, I've usually seen those more for earlier stage startups. They are maybe on their series uh, B or C, 
um, but they they aren't really planning on going public anytime soon. That's usually what I've seen. I'm not gonna say that's the like end all be all for options though. So that is how software engineers make money, or at least the most common ways that they make money. I mean, you can make money from selling things on Udemy or on Pluralsight. You can make money freelancing. You can you can make money a whole host of ways, but those are kind of the most common ways that you'll see a software engineer making money from their normal job. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up if you haven't smashed the like button already. If you aren't subscribed, be sure to subscribe. I make videos like this pretty regularly, and so I would love to have more people subscribing, more people seeing. And the last thing is let me know what you thought about this. I read every single comment, and I would like to know, you know, do you have any questions? Did this video help? Did this video not help? If it didn't help, let me know what parts were confusing. I would love to either re-explain in the comments below or maybe do a follow-up video on parts where I wasn't able to go as in-depth as I would have liked to for a YouTube video.